<laughs> this girl tours all over. She's another cutie with all the energy you got. Let's keep this show flowing. Put your hands together for Miss Molly Fine. <laughs> Have a moment of silence for Whitney. Just kind about that. Just a moment. Ready? Okay, I think we're all closer now. <laughs> um, so my name is Molly, and I grew up, like most of you, fundamentalist, evangelical, Presbyterian. Um, I had a religious mom, and religious moms really give the worst sex talk. My mom's sex talk was like, oh God, here we go. Sex happens when a man and a woman truly hate God and want to ruin both their lives. Whoa. A man takes out the most disgusting organ you've ever seen in your life, and after about 30 seconds of unpleasantness, he falls asleep on top of you and you weep silently to yourself. <laughs> and that's how you were born. <laughs> oh, God. oh God, Lord. Um, I, I never learned the facts of life. I had to learn all about sex from television. My favorite show is The Golden Girls, <laughs> which is a good thing because I learned all the important stuff, like what to do if a man dies in your bed. <laughs> you know, practical stuff. Um, my mom is also like a huge pessimist. She could win the lottery and be like, ah, I don't know. You have to pay all those taxes. Your redneck, your redneck cousins will be coming out of the woodwork. And what will we do with that big check? No, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I went to youth group growing up. Youth group. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, like they always picked like the creepiest people to volunteer for the youth, and the adults never seemed to notice. And then, like, years later, when some kids came forward saying some shit went down, the adults are always shocked. They're like, Bill was a child molester? No, I don't believe it. Good old Bill? Good old drove an ice cream truck but never sold any ice cream, Bill? Who's his mom? Good old wore short shorts, Bill? Good old liked to suck little boy's dick, Bill? No. Um, I feel like every church has like a gay pastor who doesn't know they're gay. <laughs> like my favorite sermons are always like, it has come to my attention that a homosexual bar has opened within blocks of this church. We must go down there and preach to them the word of the Lord. Their rock hard abs and their tight leather pants are an abomination. We must go have drinks with them, go on dates with them, go home with them. Whatever it takes to convert them to Christianity and save them from damnation. Amen. <laughs> I like stop going to church because it's like the same shit week after week. And maybe if they like unearthed like a more recent Bible, like the Bible too. The newer testament on DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> Jesus is back, and this time it's personal. <laughs> The Prince of Peace is pissed, and there are no other cheeks left to turn. You'll be saying Jesus Christ about Jesus Christ. <laughs> Directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> Do you guys ever wake up, and the only thing you're looking forward to is going back to sleep again? <laughs> truth. Let's get on the truth train all aboard. <laughs> Do you ever, um... Make plans to go hiking at five in the morning, make smoothies, get a mani pedi journal, and then you take a bunch of sleeping pills, sleep until five in the afternoon, and you realize that was the perfect day. <laughs> so you ever look around your shitty apartment, wish your shitty roommate would do the dishes more often, and then you realize you live alone? Uh, I live by myself in a studio apartment, and when you live alone, you tend to just wallow in your own filth. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I cannot see you, but I'm with you. Um, the other day, I was looking at my bed, and I was like, is that barbecue sauce or blood? <laughs> Either way, I'm hungry for ribs, and I'm probably not pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been like super broke from working like a million <laughs> shitty jobs. And um, when you're broke, you just like have to make do with whatever's in your apartment. 
The other day, I made a meal of everything that was left in my apartment. I had split pea soup, microwave popcorn, for dessert, some cherry lube, and some mouthwash to get my buzz on. <laughs> it works. Um, I, I grew up with, um, my brother was a child prodigy, and there's nothing that can make you feel more inadequate than having a child prodigy as a sibling. <laughs> I had to follow him in school, we always had the same teachers, and I had to learn how to manage expectations, because inevitably they'd always ask me, are you as smart as your brother? And to them I would calmly reply, could you please repeat the question? <laughs> and that was my impression of a retard. Thank you. That's it for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, my brother's a child prodigy, and my family is like, they're from North Carolina, and they're not like white trash, they're like white trash adjacent. <laughs> like, my grandma was a, she's a racist, but she's a polite racist, you know? Like, the other day I picked her up from the, from the airport, and I was like, Mama, did you have a good trip? And she was like, you know, I certainly did. There was a colored man sitting next to me on the plane, he didn't bother me none. <laughs> he didn't try to steal my pocketbook. He took out the Skymall magazine and he read it. He didn't try to pistol whip me and make me his bitch. And you know, when we joined the Mile High Club together, his dick wasn't even that big. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with having like a white trash family is they're always like calling you up with crazy ideas. Like the other day, my, my cousin Randy called me up. He was like, Molly, you live in Hollywood? Can you give me an agent for my UFC cage fighting appearances? And then 10 minutes later, he'll call me back and be like, Never mind. Got my girlfriend pregnant. <laughs> Gonna be a state trooper. <laughs> the white trash diet is not really great for like staying thin. We like a lot of all you can eat shrimp buffets. We like a lot of carnival food. And uh, so I went to Weight Watchers and like I struggle with food, but those people are in a war with it. They're like suffering from post traumatic stress disorder and you never know what's gonna set them off. <laughs> The other day I was at a meeting and I was like talking to one of them and I was like, yeah, it's a little bad this week. I had a piece of cake. And they were like, bad? You don't know what bad is. <laughs> you haven't seen what I've seen. Have you ever been to a wedding and eaten the whole wedding cake? <laughs> and it wasn't even your wedding. <laughs> I once went on a two week nacho bender <laughs> and I ate my entire family. <laughs> I went to his sister and I stayed there. Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my name's Molly. That's my. <laughs>